hardware, children's wear, ladies' lingerie. Oh, good morning, Mr. Today we're going to take a look at elevators. It's something we all have experience with. Uh, it is an important part of modern architecture and also uh, it is an important part of Newton's second law. We'll find out a lot of problems have things in them that work a lot like elevators. Elevators obey certain rules. Uh, they only travel vertically, up or down. Uh, when they speed up they reach a constant velocity uh, maybe only for a moment, but they do. And after they reach that constant velocity, the next thing they're going to do is slow down. They would never speed back up again to some higher constant velocity. Uh, if an elevator starts to slow down, it's going to slow down to a stop. It's not going to slow down to some slower speed and then slow down again. Uh, once it slows down, it continues to until it's stopped. And unfortunately, they always play bad music and no one ever talks on an elevator. Well, maybe there are some exceptions. Uh, in Las Vegas at the Luxor, the pyramid-shaped uh, casino hotel, uh, they have inclinators that run along the sides of the uh, uh, pyramid-shaped structure that travel 39 degrees to the horizontal. And in St. Louis, the Gateway Arch, as the passengers uh, go up, they fall the arch, uh, the uh, car they're in pivots to keep them always vertical. Elevators. Um, when you ride on an elevator, you feel different sensations. Uh, sometimes you feel heavy. What's an example of uh, the motion of the elevator when you feel heavy? Is it increasing speed on the way up? Right. But is there some other time you feel heavy on an elevator? Think about it. Is it when you decrease speed on the way down? And so feeling heavy happens two times on the elevator. How about when you feel lighter than normal on an elevator? Is it when you're decreasing speed on the way up? Yep. But is there another case when you feel light? That would be when it increases speed on the way down. So again, two different times you feel light on an elevator. How about when do you feel normal on an elevator? Well, that's obviously when the elevator is at rest, but also when it's moving at constant velocity, which if you realize it, that's also the same thing when you're at rest. It's just the constant velocity is zero. What about acceleration on an elevator? Which of these situations result in an upward acceleration? Increasing speed on the way up, increasing speed on the way down, decreasing speed on the way up, or decreasing speed on the way down. Think about it. Here it comes. It is increasing speed on the way up. You're right. But wait a minute. It's also decreasing speed on the way down. In both cases, the net force on the elevator is up, and the acceleration is always in the direction of the net force. If you want the elevator to speed up, you have to pull up harder than you're pulling down, than gravity's pulling down. And if you want to slow an elevator down that's already on its way down, you need to pull up on it harder than the weight. And so acceleration is up when you feel heavy. How about downward acceleration? Take a look at those same choices. And hopefully you realize it's both B and C, increasing speed on the way down, decreasing speed on the way up. And so in this case, the net force is down. The upward force on the elevator is less than the pull of gravity on the elevator. So it either increases speed on the way down, or if it's already on the way up, it would be slowing down. And in both those situations, you feel light. And so you know the acceleration is down when you feel light. And how about zero acceleration? Is it when the elevator is at rest, when the acceleration has reached a steady positive value, when the acceleration has reached a steady negative value, when the elevator is a constant velocity? And we know it's A, when the elevator is at rest. Obviously, zero acceleration. But also, yep, didn't fully that time, when the elevator has a constant velocity. Both of those, the velocity is constant. It's not changing, so the acceleration is zero. And so we also know that you would feel normal in those situations. And so let's 
imagine we have a snowman riding on an elevator and he happens to be on a bathroom scale. It's a weight conscious snowman. And he wants to see what the scale is going to read for various situations on an elevator. So first, the elevator's at rest. How do we go about this? Well, anything with Newton's second law involves a free body diagram. And so let's assume the snowman mass is 50 kilograms. And the scale reading is the normal force. Scales read the normal force, not always your weight. And so we draw the snowman as simple as possible, draw and label all the forces acting on him. The weight is down, and we have the scale or the normal force pushing up on the snowman. And don't forget your coordinate system. We're going to make up positive, and we're going to keep that the case for all these examples, and you'll do the same thing in the lab later. And so we write Newton's second law, sum of the forces equal ma, and we add up all the forces that we see uh, which are all vertical forces. The normal force is positive, and the weight, since it's down, is negative. And we also know the acceleration is zero. And so the normal force minus the weight has to add up to zero. And so the normal force equals the weight in this case, or 50 kilograms times 9.8 newtons per kilogram, 490 newtons. Nothing surprising here. So the snowman, uh, when he's at rest, the scale reads his weight. What will the scale read now, though? The elevator, the door is closed, and it starts an upward acceleration of 2 meters per second per second. And we still have the same mass. He's not melting, or it's a refrigerated elevator, maybe. And so same free body diagram. It's going to be the same one throughout here. And we write Newton's second law. And the normal force minus the weight equals ma. It's really the same thing we had before except now we solve for the normal force and we get its ma plus mg. And since the acceleration is positive 2 meters per second per second, it's in the same direction as the positive direction on our free body diagram, up, and we get a normal force that's greater than the weight. So it's 50 kilograms times 2 meters per second per second, and plus 50 times 9.8, and we get 590 newtons. And so you should be able to see that a kilogram times a meter per second per second is the same thing as a newton. You should already know that. And so that scale is going to read 590 newtons. And maybe the snowman will feel that heaviness too and squash down a little bit. And so the scale reads 590 newtons if he's increasing speed on the way up. And we'd get the same thing if you had an acceleration of 2 decreasing speed on the way down. Both cases, acceleration is up, so it's positive 2. How about if the elevator is moving at a constant velocity? Same snowman mass, same free body diagram, some of the forces equal ma, the acceleration is 0 again, and so this comes out the same as our first example. The normal force equals 50 kilograms times 9.8 newtons per kilogram, or 490 newtons. So again, it reads his weight even though the elevator is moving at a constant velocity. And that's true if it's moving at a constant velocity on the way up or the way down. And also, we figured out earlier when he's at rest, all constant velocity cases. What about a downward acceleration? Let's say the ele elevator has a downward acceleration of 3, still the same snowman mass. What will the scale read now? You might guess whether it's going to be greater than his weight or less than his weight. Some of the forces equal ma. Normal force minus mg equals ma. Same thing we went through before, same process. You'll be doing this in the lab. And we get the acceleration now is negative 3. I'm going to keep the same positive direction up. And so the acceleration is down. And so it's negative in this case. And so we get the normal force is 50 times negative 3 plus 50 times 9.8, or 340 newtons. And so the snowman is going to feel lighter. Maybe he'll stretch up a little bit as he uh, speeds up on the way down. Or maybe he's decreasing speed on the way up. And so both of those would be downward accelerations, uh, and we'd get a reading less than his weight.